Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of GalaxyCon's Virtual Hangouts, where we are bringing convention-style entertainment directly to you. And today, we'll be visiting with the cast of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And now's the time for all of you in our chat room to begin submitting your questions for our panelists. Our producers are going to be looking for the best questions you can come up with involving all of our guests and their contributions to this Revere's gaming franchise. Originally released in 1986 for the Nintendo platform, the first Legend of Zelda was a level up for the entire video game industry, combining adventure, world building, puzzle solving, and so began one of the most popular ongoing video game series of all time. Since then, the franchise has gone on to produce 19 sequels, numerous spin-offs, and created one of the strongest fandoms in video game history. Today, GalaxyCon will be discussing the franchise's best-selling game of all time, winner of multiple gaming awards, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And we are thrilled to have five actors from the English language cast joining us for the next 50 minutes. Immediately after this, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as purchasing autographs, personalized video recordings, and many more options, some of which are limited. So please head over to GalaxyCon.com for now before they might sell out. And now without further ado, let's bring out today's guests. First, he is a video game actor and video game competitor whose credits include Indigo United, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and the League of Heroes series. Today, he joins us as the voices of Ravali, Taba, and the Great Deku Tree. Please welcome Sean Chiplock. Good to be here. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> Absolutely. Good to have you here, boss. How are things on your side of the world? You know, we're we're managing pretty well. Uh, the boat, uh, the plus side of living in California is on the occasions that we do get to leave the apartment, the sky is freaking beautiful right now. Um, places are starting to restock. You know, food's pretty good. I got my Starbucks with me. It's it's we're managing. We're managing Animal Crossing. Thank goodness. It's getting there. It's getting there. And next, he has been a professional voice actor for over 10 years, whose credits include roles in Kingdom Hearts, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and helping various characters at Disney Calif California. Today, we talk about his role as the work under the work of Daruk and Unobo. Please welcome Joe Hernandez. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good, Joe. How are you? Doing good. Staying safe. Uh, you know, you're getting a nice VIP view of my uh, recording space, my booth here at home. So this is where all the magic happens. Now, is that a converted closet or was it? It is. It's a walk-in closet that's uh, on the first story of my house. And so it's right underneath the uh, the stairs. And so it's very much like Harry Potter style where I had to like, get it. And <laughs> this, is, this is my space. Yeah, some people, you know, like normal adults get like actual offices. I get like underneath the closet, underneath the, the stairs. That's it. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it works for you, it works for us. It works. Like Harry Potter, it's where the magic happens. Exactly. And speaking of magic, she's an accomplished actress, award winning voiceover artist, and self professed lover of all things geeky. Among her numerous credits, you'll find her work in Dragon Ball Super, My Hero Academia, Red Ruby. But today she joins us as the voice of Yurbosa and Riju. Please welcome Elizabeth Maxwell. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm so much better now that I'm seeing all your beautiful faces. <laughs> Oh, everything all right in your side of the world? Yeah, I've genuinely been looking forward to this panel so much. <laughs> it well, uh, it takes very little to entertain me these days, but even in the normal world, I would have been looking forward to this. <laughs> it's nice to hear a voice besides my own for the first yeah. time in almost two months. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and speaking of voices, next, he is an actor, writer, and director whose credits include the Halo, Hitman, and Final Fantasy franchises. Today, he joins us as the voice of Prince Zidon and the voice director of this entire English class. Please welcome J.B. Mortellero. Hey everybody! How Jamie, you doing? hey, oh, I missed you so much. Oh. <laughs> oh. And how are you holding up, young man? I think we're doing, you know, we're doing as best as we can. You know, stocked up with uh, food and um, you know libations. Uh, you know, having this uh, false sense of accomplishment when I finish uh, small tasks. So that's been, you know, helping helping the ego a little bit. Finish a little thing. You're like, oh, I did that. So um, we should try cooking the recipes from Breath of the Wild now that we have all this yeah. free time. You know, of all the places <laughs> to shelter in place, Jamie, I got to say your place is probably the best like place you could probably be. Yeah, are, are you renting? With that? <laughs> you renting space under your stairs, maybe? <laughs> well, yeah, before we... Yeah, there's my booth. Nice. <laughs> That's my booth. Well, before we start cooking, let's bring out our final chef. 
She is an actress, musician, and motion capture performer whose work includes Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six, and puppeteering work on the Smurfs. Today, she is here as the voice of Princess Zelda herself. Please welcome Patricia Somerset. <laughs> How did you know I was cooking? I'm cooking oh. a lot right now. It's well, he bet she mentioned throwing something together. So you, know. yeah. you said puppeteering work. Yeah, yeah. The like, yeah. I did the the Smurfette um, live action work behind the camera. That then then that's they turned so into cool. CGI for the making of Smurfs too. It was like this. Oh really that's gosh. really cool. Yeah, I thought Smurfs were real. What are you talking about? <laughs> they are real. Oh, they are real. Okay. <laughs> Well, they say you got to be really good to see one, and I've never seen one, which so I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us so much. And uh, again, we miss you off of our, our stages. We look forward to hosting you uh, back live in person in front of your fans. And heaven willing, we'll all get to that point. So what I'd love to do is uh, throw a couple questions at you while we're collecting them from our audience. And first of all, I'd like to know, uh, were any of you familiar with the Zelda series at all before you came on board? Oh, yeah, it was yeah. one of the first games that I played in the, yeah. the NES version. I think I was like five years old. And so, you know, it's just classic. And, you know, you grow up as the, the consoles go on and, you know, SNES, N64, GameCube, so on and so forth. And so it's, you know, it's historic. It's monumental. Without getting into it, there are two distinct memories that should explain how into this franchise I am. Uh, there's a time I asked an art van manager to call his daughter who was at college so she could help me with my Link's Awakening game that I was playing. And there was the time that I woke up sobbing because I just finished Ocarina of Time. And I was very upset at how one character left a different character. And my dad thought I was sick. He didn't understand why I was crying about this video game character. But <laughs> I blame my brother for my lack of experience with Zelda because he made sure that I grew up in a Sega household. <laughs> so, you know, I had, you know, original Sega, Sega Genesis. What came after that? Was it the Dreamcast? Pong. <laughs> Pong. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I was fam familiar with Zelda. Like, who doesn't know what Zelda is? But I actually hadn't played a lot of the games before... Uh, Breath of the Wild, myself. It's all good for me. I was like, uh, I've been around Nintendo for a long time. I, uh, I I knew Zelda very well, but I was also involved with Mario. I, I actually directed the TV commercial, the first N sixty four TV commercial, and the first uh, uh, Game Boy Pocket commercial, and the first <laughs> um, uh, Bomberman TV commercial. So I've been around Nintendo a long time. So I watched Zelda go from these little pixelated things, watch Mario go from side scroller to, you know, N64 and up. So I've been around a long time and just always been a fan. It was your fault I got addicted to Bomberman. Now I know. <laughs> we had the Spider-Man music from the original uh, uh, Spider-Man uh, series, Bomberman. Yeah. Bomberman. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah to answer, um, um, I uh, definitely knew about Zelda uh, growing up for sure. We had the, the original uh, NES in our house. I, I think I was, I mean, I was definitely more of a Mario fan growing up. We had like the Mario and the, the duck hunt mm. and, and that sort of thing. That's what we would generally play. But yeah, when, when we figured out what it was, it, it was like a, a big shock at how iconic it, it was going to be, you know. Obviously. I'm having flashbacks to the duck hunt dog and his mocking. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So I'd like to hear, uh, uh, JB. This will start with you as director and casting director. Uh, when when you get when you get, when you were handed the assignment of casting the English language version of the game, uh, how did that begin for you? Well, it was a very interesting story. Um, uh, uh, Formosa had called me to the studio and um, I had worked on uh, other Nintendo projects and uh, they said, there's a project we don't want, we can't tell you what it is exactly yet. And I was like, okay. Then they, they got in for a meeting and we started chatting about it. And they said, so we could tell you sign the NDAs, six NDAs, you promise your arm if you say anything and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, they told me it was Zelda. And I was like, oh, Wow, they're gonna they're gonna voice this. He said they're gonna it's gonna be a big voiceover production for this game. And they started giving me showing me some examples of what they were doing, and I I was so excited because again be, having been around Nintendo for so long, I knew that this was gonna be something really special, and I uh, was very excited about it. Um, at that point, I mean, from then on, I could I could tell you about how we went about casting and stuff like that, but well, you know, it'll take some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, real quick, uh, 
Yeah, who, yeah, who's who's got who's got a good audition story? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm just in the habit of answering last because I tend to tell novels of stories. <laughs> no, stop, Patricia, stop. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So okay. So I'll, I'll try. I'll do my best to make this brief. Oh, go. Was someone else wanting to go first? Go ahead, John. Um, go ahead, John. So my audition is an example that I tell people of. Uh, when you get in this industry, there are those moments that say, "What are you willing to sacrifice, or what risk are you willing to take for your career?" Um, and at the time that I originally auditioned, the first major thing I decided was because we were given a chance to audition for multiple characters, and I had done two that I knew I was going to be pretty confident with. And for the third one, I wanted to go completely outside of my range. Um, it was the character that would end up being the Great Deku Tree, but it was something that I'm normally not known for. This very very low, very raspy, very wise voice. Um, and even my mentor was very confused as to why I wanted to go for it. Um, but that character ended up being what got me cast in the game to begin with because it was just such an unexpected contrast. So had it not been for him, I might not have been in the game in the first place. But the callbacks... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, it's true. Because when he came in, you know, I had everybody come in and after, you know, everybody was brilliant in their uh, remote auditions. And um, when Sean came in and he was telling us he wanted to audition for the Deku Tree. And uh, uh, my client and I, you know, we've, we've been around for a long time. So we were like, well, we've got these big guys coming in to do this. We've got, you know, really heavy voices. Thank you, Sean. And he's like, no, please let me. I said, okay, well, yeah, I mean, he's so talented. We said, all right. And then he gets in the booth and he does this thing. And he brings this voice and we were just blown away. Just absolutely blown away. Then when we told him the uh, other character, I could I could say who of the cast when they found out who else they were going to uh, uh, book squealed and ran to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. That was someone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he was so excited, and everybody was so excited about it. And, and we were just, it's it's been like that since the beginning, even till now. The excitement about it, and uh, it, was, it was so much fun being able to tell each person mm -hmm. individually. You book this. This is going to be huge because nobody knew what it was. The scripts are sanitized yeah. when you're uh, casting. Some people had some ideas of different things, but nobody guessed. Nobody. Guessed I Zelda. I will never forget when I was at one of the auditions and I pointed to something that was being used as a reference and I said, "You know what this?" I had no idea what the project was for. I said, "You know what this reminds me of? Zant from Twilight Princess. It just." It reminds me so much of Zant, and I had no idea at the time. <laughs> so to, to Jamie's point, the scripts uh, yeah, were yeah. completely scrubbed clean. There was no mention of Hyrule. There was no mention of Zelda, nothing of Link. Like, it was just, I mean, it was a very kind of semi-generic genre in the realm of, like, Lord of the Rings or something. I honestly thought nature. it was for a Dragon Quest game. And, I, you, you know, so you, you hear, okay, Nintendo... Um, you know, maybe it's Zelda, but in all likelihood, I thought it was like maybe a Fire Emblem game or something like that. And so you're just kind of going and putting your best foot forward. And I remember distinctly um, when I read for uh, Daruk, he, he was, you know, the, the script didn't have him named as Daruk. It was Hannibal, if I recall correctly. And yeah. um, Jamie kind of like built up this image in my mind of like uh, Gimli from uh, from Lord of the Rings, you know, this very, you know, big, bolsterous, larger than life guy, you know, very uh, bombastic, you know, and it's like, oh, OK. And you just kind of roll with it and you you I get your it. Director, you roll you, with it you, as Daruk. Ah, <laughs> you know, you just you know, you, your director wants you to succeed and you just you want to put your your best foot forward and, you know, just go with it. And it wasn't until I think the first day that we we came in to record that jamie you pulled me aside and said this is zelda yeah and it was like whoa <laughs> okay so many that, times, but we had to keep it a secret for so long and it yeah was, it was just really exciting to be able to tell everybody absolutely <laughs> now i remember that uh i have a, a story similar to sean's um <laughs> where I believe when we were doing the first round of auditions for this, Jamie, you guys weren't entirely sure where you were wanting accents to land for yeah. all of the characters. Perfect. So if I remember correctly, it, it said to, you know, come prepared with um, a neutral American accent and a British accent. Mm -hmm. And after reading the character description of who would eventually become Urbosa, um, I got it in my head that, she wouldn't have a British accent. She'd have a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember 
<laughs> telling you and you being like, nah, that's cool. Like, let's just stick with it. No, 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 Jamie, Jamie, I got I, I just really have this great idea for this Scottish accent. You know, oh, every time she sees a sword struck across your back. <laughs> and you were like, no, 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 it's fine, really. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to see fan art of that character with bagpipes. Yeah. I will pay for it. I will fund it. So I have like the flip side of the the story is you, Sean. I'm like lucky that my original read was good enough that they ignored my <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. The girls were great. The guys were no. The guys were great. Like, this is so Brady Bunch right yeah, now. This is Brady the Bunch. story. <laughs> <laughs> of a bunch of factors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, this this franchise has gone on multiple generations, multiple platforms, and we certainly hope it continues to go on. Uh, what's it? What's it been like being a part of the Zelda fandom? And do you have like a memory uh, of meeting a Zelda fan that uh, has really resonated with you? Just the community in general. Like, for me, a huge part of being in this industry is because I don't have time in the day for every single thing that I've played or been a part of or everything. I, I, I don't have time to play all the games that I want to play. But by being in this as, like, a character or, or, like, being familiar through the scenes that I've played, you know, when people make fan art regarding certain character relationships or moments, I'm able to connect with that because I'm familiar with it through my performance. So just having that access to the creative community the artists, the music remixers, the, the, the scenario writers is so cool because it's through them that a game, the, the game came out more than three years ago. And yet the community for around it is still so thriving and so genius and so passionate. And I just love being able to spend time with those people and say, I notice what you do. And I'm so grateful that you allow my character to continue to exist beyond the game's release date through your work. So thank you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, true, true. I can tell well, you a story thanks. real quick. We were at a convention uh, last summer and there was a woman that came up to me and she said that her son was probably about 10, 12 or, or in that, that age. And she said, you know, my son is autistic. He loves playing this game. Thank you for me as a parent, you know, giving us a sense of normalcy, you know, giving him something to that, that brings joy in his life. And, and, you know, you could tell that, you know, life had had thrown her some curveballs, needless to say. And, uh, you know, I never do this, but I just I went up and I just gave her this big hug. Yeah. And we just had this like moment of just, you know, it just it pulls at your heartstrings. So that, you know, even to this day still oh, yeah. sticks in my mind. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a similar situation in, in Florida and um, I was uh, just so moved. Uh, a young man. Um, it was autistic and the mother came up and said similar something similar to thank you for working on the project and it's given us some time and it really gives him joy and we could watch him have this joy and yeah. and it really gives the family uh, something to um, rally around and you know i was like choking up and then you know the, yeah. they leave and the next person comes up and i'm like hello thank you for coming and, you know i was <laughs> still hits me too yeah i was gonna ask you how to be a voice actor but never mind <laughs> Be ready yeah. to cry a lot. There's a lot of crying involved. Yeah. I mean it's it's I mean for me it's just been a huge honor to be involved in something of this, you know, status. You know, I feel like Zelda spans generations and, you know, it's kind of a a really cool historical moment for them to add voice acting in there, but uh particularly with the character of Urbosa, I just I love what they did with her in terms of her being like an atypical kind of female character in in the video games where, you know, she's, I mean, she is just ripped <laughs> and, you know, has that super defined nose. And it's, I, I just love that they've created a beautiful character using characteristics mm. that aren't always mm -hmm associated with yes. beautiful women in yes. video games. And uh, I was super touched. Um, a, a girl, a young woman reached out to me on Twitter and was talking about how uh, she naturally has a super deep voice and she's only like 17 or 18. I know, and I yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I think, I think some of she's you guys kind of chimed mm -hmm. in on the feed, but um, 
you know, she was talking about how she was always super self-conscious about it. She got teased about it a lot in school. Mm -hmm. And then she played Breath of the Wild for the first time and heard Urbosa. Um, and it was kind of like a light bulb moment for her that, hey, maybe uh, being a deeper voiced woman is not like a bad or unattractive thing. You're going to make me choke up just listening <laughs> to your story. My God. Oh, my God. It made me cry. Yeah. Like I cried when yeah. she made this beautiful video. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's an honor and a pleasure to entertain as an actor. But when we get to hear about how the characters and the properties that we're fortunate enough to be involved in affect people um, in that way. It's always really moving. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Diversification in characters, body yeah. types, physical mm -hmm. attributes. Yeah. This is a wonderfully expanding rainbow that we're seeing in video games and other forms of media. And I I'm all for it, especially if it touches somebody like that. I've often likened Breath of the Wild to like a Nintendo version of Mad Max where the story isn't about Link. It's about the people that Link encounters and their individual struggles and their their goals. And that plays right in line with this idea of a very diverse cast of, of races, of appearances, of types. So, yeah, that that I identify with that. Very cool. Patricia, do you have yeah, a I mean, fan? Yeah, I, was like, I should add something to that um, great uh, question, really. Um, and that's, we've all met so many fans who have touched us. I think at, at every show you go to, you, you meet, there's so many special experiences and then a few standouts where you go, wow, that was a really profound moment, you know, when you meet somebody. I, I was thinking back to how many people I've met who have named their kids Link and Zelda and I, I get to hold them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I get a family will come up and be like, we named our daughter Zelda, or or they'll send me pictures of little Zeldas or little Links. And I'm just like, the way that it's family friendly and the way that families rally around the, the activity of playing games together uh, is something very special about this particular franchise too. So um, yeah. yeah, that's my two cents on that. One of the many joys. <laughs> Baby Nintendo, Links and Zelda's come out. You know, Nintendo, is, Nintendo gave us all this opportunity, and I'm just so thankful to them because what are we doing without you know the, the great the great Nintendo? You know, and I've uh, been so thankful uh, for being a part of this project too. And and with Prince Sidon, you know, he's so positive and he's so you know encouraging. So I've had a lot of people via Twitter and via convention say how how he inspires them and and and, and um, it makes them feel comfortable and he's, he's a little different, it's unexpected, you know, um, and it's, you know, all the way he's written and the way he's, he's drawn, of course. Uh, but I was so, so pleased that Nintendo brought me in on this. Mm. Uh, By the way, one of those wow moments for me was when I found out that Patricia taught herself highly yep. yeah. in order yep. to be able <laughs> to yeah. sign people. That is insane. Yeah. I can tell you, Patricia, in at least. Hylian. At least once every couple of months, someone posts uh, their box that you signed and wrote something in Hylian on Reddit, and it just explodes because people are like, it, it, people relearn. They're like, wait, she taught herself to do that? Holy crap, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm so worth it. <laughs> that's a good idea. And if it's next to my terrible signature, it makes mine look even worse. I learned, I learned how to draw the Triforce really good. Thanks, elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the ledger of a oh, third grader. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking of wow moments, let's see if we can create some with our audience. I'm going to ask Jude, our awesome producer, if he could roll out our first question. And this one comes from M. What location in the Zelda universe would you want to live in? Oh, boy. I know I would not want to live in the Rito village, and that's because I am afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would peer out over the edge of one of those those little huts on the side of the cliff and be like, mm, nope, nope, I'm going back near the ocean. Hmm. I know it's a cop up, but I like Zoro's domain. I just I think it's beautiful, it's pretty nice too. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably say the same actually. Yeah, Zora's like the yeah. water. Yeah, the water. Yeah, go for a swim. <laughs> come on up, come on party, guys. Swim. Come well, I like way. the Gerudo land because it's ruled by women, but hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good point. 
<laughs> fair indeed, fair indeed. Well, if you if you get a reconsideration, we'll go to that. M, thank you for that question. Let's see what else we have. Thank you, M. From Derp, uh, 431. <laughs> what is your guys' favorite character to voice act in your whole career? Wow. Mm. I try to find something from each of my roles that I can take home with me, whether it's a milestone accomplishment or a challenge that I overcame or something that I knew I was going to do really well. Probably the one that I am the most proud of was my role as Subaru Natsuki in ReZero. Um, just because it was my first lead role in an anime. And God, what a hell of a lead role to have to uh, step into the shoes of. Um, just between the emotions that had to be displayed and the intensity to which those emotions had to be displayed, it was a very, very challenging series, but one I knew I could rise to the challenge of. And I'm just very... It's, it's one of the few cases where I am just completely proud of what I did in that project. And there's not really any instances where I'm like, I could have done that better, or I wish I'd done that differently. Hmm. Cool. Nice. I um I'm gonna say Prince Sidon. Be careful what you're you, for. <laughs> you are you are Prince Sidon, man. I will defend that claim to the till my death. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, you were saying? Oh that was Elizabeth who was, uh, yeah. was oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. yeah, I was um I mean I feel like the answer to this question often ends up being whatever character I'm working on in the moment because you know, I feel close and really connected with the character that I'm currently working on. But um, in term terms of just kind of personal significance, uh, there is a Rooster Teeth show called Camp Camp, um, mm -hmm. where I play a little ragamuffin named Nikki. And uh, that was a, that's a really special property for me uh, because it's one of the first prelay roles I've ever gotten to do. One of my first lead roles. Uh, it might have been the very first role I ever did that was straight up comedy. Um, so it was a lot of firsts for me, and I genuinely just adore the show, both as a fan as well as an actor who got to work on it. Um, but Herbosa is definitely up there too. And I'm not just saying that because we're on a <laughs> Zelda live stream. <laughs> ah, I'll turn it um, Yeah, I, probably uh, I, there's a lot, there are, there are a lot of highlights. It's similar to Elizabeth. I really enjoy what I'm working on at the time because you, when you're a working actor and you're, you're getting to create something new as part of any sort of franchise, it's like you, you really feel the privilege of it. Um, but definitely Zelda in terms of the scope of, of what it's given the before, during and after has just been so epic. It's hard to <laughs> compare almost anything mm -hmm. to that. Um, and another another one would probably be Ash from Rainbow Six just because mm -hmm. the fandom and the, the length of it, it's actually been something that's been going on for years now and continuing to grow and become competitive esports. And the character happened to be really popular for competitive esports, And that was just so lucky and so great. And she's such a badass and so different from, from this character. Um, so yeah, probably those as a top two. Yeah. Um, for me, I would say probably Daruk, you know, is definitely like one, one, a, uh, one B would probably be Pesci from Jojo's yeah. bizarre adventure. Um, and, and it was such a fun process of like creating this character because, you know, everybody else on JoJo's is very like kind of subdued, very natural, you know, you know, and, and here comes Pesci, you know, it's kind of, kind of has this like constipated sound to him a little bit, you know, the way that he talks, you know, he just sounds like he's so wound up, you know, and so it's just, it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I finally yeah. got to those episodes recently, Joe, and that the 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 shift that you did in your character's mannerisms when he finally like starts to take control of the situation for himself, it was very it was horrifying in the best way. So great it job was, on that. It was a nice little arc to explore this character who had been kind of put down like a majority of his life, and then he kind of came around, kind of came full circle in a sense. Where it's like, no, I can I can dictate my own future. I can I right. can you know. It, it it was it was a nice little arc for that character, so I enjoyed it. Nice, Derp four thirty one. Thank you for that question. Let's see what we have next from Daniel Fitzpatrick. <laughs> what monster scared you the most in the Zelda franchise? Oh man, you, you cannot Guardians. say your you can't say your director. 
<laughs> the size of the map. <laughs> um, no, I, the map. <laughs> no, to, to answer seriously, um, I think, okay, it's not really a monster, but I remember, I remember I was playing at a friend's house once and it was in the evening and I remember turning the camera to look at one of the other places I wanted to head to. And I didn't realize this, but one of the, the giant elemental dragons had shown up in the sky and he was getting pretty close at this point. So I'm not expecting anything in the sky except maybe birds. And I turned the camera and there's this giant scaly creature starting to head towards my position. I was like, what the hell is that? And then, and then the friend told me that I had to shoot it with an arrow, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you know that's easy. Let's let's tick off the giant creature floating towards you in the sky. Nothing could possibly go wrong if I do that." <laughs> <laughs> I can just cop up and be like uh, Ganon because I've been trapped <laughs> in a castle for like a hundred <laughs> years, and there's no other monster that could possibly do that to me. <laughs> so that's pretty. I cool. will. I will say the way Nintendo or or. Yeah. Kudos to whoever was in charge of handling the visual assets, because when you do that final fight and and the second form of Ganon like mm. just bears down on you and it shows the sheer scale of his size versus yours, yeah. it it's hype. It's scary as hell, but it's hype. The I way... uh... oh. no, no, go ahead, Patricia. <laughs> I'll just add in the sort of like the bull Patricia. imagery when he's like a big giant bull there at the end. Um, that mm. reminds me so much of The Last Unicorn on Earth, which was one of my favorite movies growing up. I just think of the Red Bull. Um, like, they look identical, I swear oh, to God. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just, uh, that's that monster guy. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just yeah. say that yeah. one of the <laughs> moments I remember playing the game where I, like, jumped the highest was uh, I was, you know, do -do doing around, exploring, and... I had no idea that the guardians were like against you. Yes, same. <laughs> and I see it and I think it's like, I don't know, like a little ancient relic or something that's going to like talk to me or like give me some loot. And like, I just walked right up to it. Oh. And that moment when it first attacked me, I <laughs> yelped and, and fell off the couch uh out of surprise <laughs> so whenever that music comes on i mean i get like anxiety like whenever you're near the guardians because like you know you know something bad's about to happen mm -hmm. but yes. <laughs> nice. I, I love on that note though the first time shooting. that you successfully parry the laser beam with your shield and knock it right back at them and destroy them instantly it's the most gratifying thing it's like <laughs> no no not this time <laughs> jamie you were saying something no, I was just saying, I was, I was kind of in the, uh, Patricia's world there with Ganon because knowing that that's always out there just creates all that tension and and mystery all through the game. So you know these other characters, these other monsters, you're going to be able to get through, but are you going to be able to defeat? Are you going to be able to get Ganon? So it's it's always that constant fear, that constant tension from that character that really gets me. Oh, uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Daniel, thank you for that question. Jude, what's next? Thank you, Daniel. From Val, what's your favorite line in the game? Yours or somebody else's? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that's a I hard question. Like, um, Zelda, open your, open your eyes. I mean, that's just, uh, just beautiful, you know? Yeah. I love all uh, of... Um, uh, Prince Sidon's lines, but yeah. open your eyes. It's just, it just gives me the chills every time I hear that. Open your eyes. Your <laughs> eyes. <laughs> I Sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, they're all at a studio. They're all next to each other. <laughs> There's, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take this question literally. Uh, my favorite line in the game is not actually one that's spoken. Just the musicality to a lot of Cass's lines is something that I really enjoy. Um, I'm a big fan of storyteller characters that don't really have a direct involvement in the sequence of events that form the plot, but who kind of act as archivers of the history of that world and then tell it to the characters so that you can learn about. Because it's, it's almost like a neutral third party view rather than bias uh, first party accounts from the characters telling you, here's my side of the story. So I just, you know, every time you run into Cass and he gives you a little bit of insight as to like, 
the world and the characters within it. It, it. It's kind of like a piece of home. It's a little piece of, hey, here's someone who's who's just as much of an outsider as I feel like sometimes. And, and that's kind of what helped me develop a closer relationship with him. And so I just really enjoy a lot of the lines that he says. Cool. I uh, one of my favorite lines, at least to perform when we were recording, was uh, in in the scene uh, right after you receive Urbosa's Fury, um, where at the very very end she's uh, you know talking about take take care of yourself, Link, and take good care of Hyrule too. <laughs> oh, winky winky. Um, and <laughs> I just remember loving that line because a, like, I love how she's kind of having fun with the knowledge of the future that she might know and that Link doesn't. Um, and it just felt like such a mom thing for her to do. Um, and those are some of my favorite like moments is when, when Urbosa gets into kind of mom, mom mode with the mom humor. <laughs> Great. Great job, little guy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. The number yeah. of times I've been told by people that uh, they want to yell at their screen every time Rivali's Gale is now ready plays, because yeah. apparently it only chooses to to be ready right after they could have used it. Like they'll fall down a cliff, <laughs> their character's pretty much one heart away from death, and like two seconds after they pick their character back up, Rivali's Gale is now ready. And they're like, thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know. I think the line that I hear about the most is definitely the blood moon because people either love it and they're like, please sign this on this thing. Or they're like, they just hate it because it brings them so much grief when they've just killed a bunch of things and they have to come back to life and respawn. Um, but anyway. <laughs> and every time there is a full moon or a blood moon in real life, I'm always like, Blood moon rising, rising. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, Patricia, I remember, I remember someone who uh, they went in and made their own version of the box art for Breath of the Wild, but they edited the horizon so it looked like a blood moon had risen. And Link was, I, you have to let me know if you ever see that in the wild because I, I saw it and I thought it looked so cool because he was looking out over this land that clearly was about to have a bunch of baddies resurrected. So <laughs> that's great. I just recently I restarted playing the game, um, and that whole opening sequence, Patricia with a you know link open your eyes like that mm. that whole series was really beautiful i mean i mean just just thinking about it again um it really oh, set you, the tone for the beginning of the game and and marvelous work on your part thank you and thank you jamie that's right <laughs> <laughs> that was all his directing my pleasure i mean i could tell you i could talk about each one of the actors you know at length they could do it 50 minutes just on each actor and how proud i was to work on this, but how how amazing it was to work with each of you. And I know I've told you that before, but I'll say it again. It was just, you know, my my honor, my pleasure to work with you guys. You guys killed it, killed it, and made me look good. And, you know. It's so hard not to just like give a group hug. It seems like we should be able to, but we're like in these little virtual boxes. I don't like <laughs> No, six feet, six feet, yeah, six feet, please. <laughs> <laughs> 6,000 6, miles in my case. Uh, it, was such, I, it was such a pleasure. I think uh, we have time for just one more. So I'm going to ask you to uh, look in the bag and see if we can go out on a really good one. From Kevin, everyone, give him the chance. What would your link voice be? It's not easy being green. <laughs> 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 I will stop you getting at any cost. Ah! <laughs> Hello, my name is Link. I'm here to rescue the princess. <laughs> Say hello to my little princess friend. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just love the idea of, of Link charging up his spin attack and going, yeah. <laughs> Bro, got it. You just gotta chill, man. <laughs> so we were at a convention uh Zelda, where where you've been for the last hundred years. Come <laughs> on now. What a <laughs> one of my favorite things to do when we were at it when we get together for cons is like say each other's <laughs> lines. As, yeah. as characters and i think i i have you patricia on tape trying to like deliver daruk's protection is now ready to roll and oh it's God. so fun and i think i tried doing urbosa's fury and it's just it just it doesn't work i'm sorry <laughs> it's, it's, yeah 
It's awful. <laughs> I want to hear Daruk doing all of Mifa's really tender, intimate lines. Oh I feel God. like that would be such there, an amazing There contrast. is nothing tender about Daruk at all. Nothing. <laughs> he's, he's just like, Mipha's, or Daruk's grace is now ready. He slaps you on the up. back so hard that it yeah. knocks the death out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a quick one. So, Jude, I think we have time for one more. So, if you can, let's go ahead and throw that one up. And another one. And from Morbia, and more. I have a question for all the voice actors. What was your favorite moments for your characters you voiced? Oh boy. I'm a big fan of uh, the DLC content for Rovali. Uh, yeah. For those of you who don't know, by the way, if you go back and refight the the, the the Ganon bosses multiple times, you can get additional dialogue from each of the champions. Um, and for Rovali's, he kind of talks about how he wonders if anyone back at the Rita Village still keeps him in mind. He wishes he could have been around so you guys could have a proper competition to see who was the best. And it's one of those rare moments where you actually get to see Rivali be fervent about wanting to prove himself in front of Link. Um, it was one of the rare occasions where I got to actually exaggerate a little bit. And I, I'm someone who really enjoys higher energy stuff. So for me, that, that moment of getting to really be a little bit petty as the character was something that I cherished. Hmm. Very nice. Um, hiding from a dog during the DLC. Uh, <laughs> just, you know. Shivering, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, but also on like a kind of a just mushy uh, note uh, on the DLC, that last scene where we all get together and take the mm -hmm. picture, um, that was the last thing that I recorded, oh. and it was just it was just this like beautiful bookend to this entire journey that we had taken. It was just it was just like this just feels moment, and um, yeah, I'll never forget it. Oh. Nice. I I do think uh, some of those character poses, I think accurately represent how we would have responded in real life yeah. like i could definitely see our personalities <laughs> meshing with the characters in that photo i'm trying to think if i if i have that photo um oh let me see if i can wait Gosh, right here. let me just check oh for me my answer is uh the the frog scene was really was really sweet really fun because uh, i love frogs in real life and uh oh. yeah <clears throat> Anything that eats insects yeah. is okay in my book. <laughs> <laughs> For me, um, I mean, For obviously. Me was, uh, just when, when... You oh, go, Jamie. You go. You go ahead. Ladies, okay. you go. Um, yeah, exactly. For me, it was probably uh, the scene uh, where Urbosa and Zelda are um, up on Bonaboris and Link joins them. And I mean, I love uh, when Urbosa is a badass, but some of my favorite moments were when she was kind of like more tender and vulnerable and talking about, you know, Zelda while she's sleeping. But then you also get, again, a little bit of her like mischievous mom humor at the end. So that that scene really like hit, checked a lot of boxes for me. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Here's like oh, a reproduction. Do so you guys uh, remember this? Uh, yes, uh, yes, that's oh, right. Oh <laughs> my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> it's a reproduction of like the the. the I, do you also have the one where we recreated the the con specific? Yes, yes, yes. Is this? There's the con. Oh, oh, that's, that's awesome. so good. <laughs> Oh, oh my god that is one of my favorite yeah. memories of us together <laughs> oh thanks john yeah. next time we do next time we do this let us do something with that maybe we'll put together a print or something like that for you guys any any artists out there i would love to commission you to do a piece of this this stream thing going on right now but it's the characters sitting in front of their webcams <laughs> instead of us <laughs> <laughs> uh, give new ideas. Pat, make make Patty a member of the Yiga clan. <laughs> like all of us are like characters. Love it. I'm I'm honored. I'm honored. Uh, Jamie, you got a uh, got one for for us? Well, I would say the there were so many little moments that are just so uh, sweet and sincere. But I love when he uh, when Prince Sidon wishes uh, Link good luck. There's such sincerity, mm -hmm. and uh, as he sees Link go off. And uh, he cares so much. 
And I, I, the sincerity of that just always really got me. So that was one of my favorite moments. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Well, it, this has been a fantastic moment. Unfortunately, we're just about at time. But before you all go, I wanted to ask you all if you had any uh, any future projects that you might be allowed to share with us. Uh, and, uh, of course, any social media outlets that uh, we can follow you on if we don't already. Come on. You guys know your social media outlets. I can't go first every time. <laughs> okay, you go ahead, Sean. I'm trying to think of what's under NDA and what's not. <laughs> my Twitter, yeah. my Twitter is at Sonic Mega. You guys are always free to reach out if you have if you aren't able to get your question answered here. Uh, you can ask me questions on there, and I'll do my best to answer. My Twitch is also Sonic Mega. I stream five days a week, starting at 5 p.m. Uh, we've got stuff between like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Trials of Mana, a lot of fun games, and I often involve the chat. So I hope you'll show up. Um, regarding projects, there's not much I can talk about because it's not public yet, but I do know that I have been working with this guy on some really fun stuff and, uh, just Ooh. stay tuned to Twitter because Twitter's where all the big announcements happen. Yeah. Um, and there's some really yeah. personally fulfilling stuff that I'm just chomping at yeah. the bit to get to I'm talk excited. about. I can't wait to talk about it, Sean. I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, well, just, you know, I'm at JD Montemaro at Twitter and Instagram. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to drop. Oh, no, no, no. There's a there's a lag. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, uh, Patricia, yeah. anything? So JD uh, Mortolaro, Twitter and Instagram. Can't talk about anything right now. J D Mortolaro. Right. Okay. Mortolaro. Patricia, are you uh, do anything with uh, your band lately? Oh, I I am. Yeah. I mean, we, we released a little live video yeah. a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, we have a whole album coming out this next year, which has been delayed because of this whole situation, but, uh, oh, yeah. all the better. We're still, it, it means that we're sort of remotely writing more music. Um, my socials, which I'm, I'm probably going to just be posting the music stuff on the, cause I don't want to have like six, you know, social media <laughs> things that I don't need. No I have like three already. Um, I'm, I'm at Somerset underscore. So Somerset with two T's and summer like the season, my last name. And our band has, is called the Somerset Band. We've just shortened it and made it that, even though it's six Aww. people. Um, yeah, that kind of sounds really oh, narcissistic, but everybody's great. like, no, 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 it's a good name. Like, oh. um, and I, yeah, I, I have some cool things coming up, but they're under NDA until mm -hmm. they're not. So yeah, I think there's going to be some announcements coming out soon. The way it usually is. Stay tuned, as always. Yeah. In the meantime, Elizabeth, anything on deck you're allowed to share or? Uh, let's see. Well, first, um, on Instagram, I am Elizabeth Maxwell. I guess I must have been the first one to join. <laughs> and um, on Twitter, I'm about Elizabeth M. Um, and I'm trying to think of what I can talk about. Um, I'm working on um, a couple of animes with Funimation right now. Um, they have got My Hero Academia and Plunderer um, back up on the dub, English dub schedule. Um, big props to Funimation. I'm amazed at how they've progressed with the with the dubbing at home technology. Yeah. Um, I'm also in uh, Altered Carbon Resleeved, which uh, just came out on Netflix about a month ago. And um, I do on camera work as well, which I know people don't uh, know it as well as my voiceover work most of the time. But I was in, um, I was a lead role in a meta horror comedy called Virgin Cheerleaders in Chains. <laughs> and um, I'm really proud of it. It's an incredible, really funny, uh, really smart movie. And you can stream it on Amazon Prime right now. Hey, Ooh. awesome. awesome. Uh, add that right. on my watch list. All right. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Galaxy Con right. viewers, this has been the cast of oh, Legend of Oi. Yo. Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe, we got uh, you. Yeah, uh, Twitter <laughs> handle at Joe Hernandez VO. Same thing with uh, Instagram. Uh, as far as projects that I can talk about, uh, there's uh, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius, War of the Visions that just Woo! came out. Oh, check out your mobile platform. Uh, Gears Tactics, which just came out last week, which is a prequel to uh, Gears of War and all that stuff. So hmm. check it out. Oh, All right. Pixel Ripped, 1995. I could talk about that. Pixel Ripped, 1995. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Galaxy Con viewers, this has been the, the VR game. It's really cool.
Uh, <laughs> Breath of the Wild, and that was my time, but it doesn't have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our panelists as a group or individually, purchase an autograph or get a personalized recorded message, please head over to galaxycon.com. And while you're there, please check out our schedule for upcoming events just like this one. And from all of us here at our GalaxyCon to your home planet, we thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again this Saturday as we hope the cast of the 